Now we're in the back of the ambulance and uh, Chief Callen, take us through some of the technology components in here. Now there's a lot of technology back here. There is communications technology, there's emergency medical services technology, there's medications, some 38 different cardiac medications here. Wow. We can relieve pain, we can support your blood pressure, we can speed your heart up, we can slow it down, stabilize your blood pressure, replace fluid loss, protect your breathing and your airway, and even breathe for you if you're too tired or if you're unable to breathe on your own. Wow. We can do every life-sustaining technique they do in the emergency room of a hospital right here in the back of an ambulance. You just have to picture four people back here doing it. <laughs> That's the reason it's so big. Mm. So four people can work back here, work with the hospital, and do all the emergency care procedures in order to protect your vital signs and save your life. This is the physio control. Life Pack 12 made by a company called Medtronics. And as the Life Pack 12, it's called that because it does a 12 lead EKG in the field. And that electrocardiogram allows us to look at the heart like the points of a compass in 12 different angles in order to look at the heart and see if it's injured. And if it's injured, that's what a heart attack is. Mm -hmm. And so this unit right here cost $35,000 new. And so that's the reason that some of the technology that we do is so important, is that when you're saving someone's life due to a heart attack, there's nothing more important or vital that we could possibly do in anyone's life. And that's why all the equipment has to be the state of the art, our people have to be the best trained and have all of the resources necessary in order to provide that life-saving therapy. Chief Cowan, this is an um, ambulance or medic unit? <laughs> now, folks use the term interchangeably. I do as well. But the truth is, is that an ambulance is an inner facility transporting vehicle. And it may or may not have paramedics on it. Mm. A medic unit has paramedics on it. It's a 911 response emergency vehicles. Our paramedic units, medic units, have two paramedics on them and they respond to true 911 emergencies. Yeah, and we noticed that these medic units are traveling tandem with uh, fire engines when they're uh, going to calls. Why do they go together? Folks ask us that a lot. Why do you send a fire truck to an ambulance call? And the reason is people. This unit only has two personnel on it. And those folks will go to someone's medical emergency and they may be incapacitated. If you mm. have to lift them or carry equipment or the gurney or all the other things that are part of that process, ideally you want six people at every emergency medical 911 call because if you were doing CPR, for example, one person is breathing, one person is doing chest compressions, another person is starting the IV and giving emergency medications, and another person is going to defibrillate with the paddles, and, and someone else is running equipment back and forth. That's five people. Mm. What's the sixth guy for? <laughs> He's the guy that has to drive the truck back to the station to go get the rest of the people. So, wow. And that ambulance could transport the patient, the driver, and four people working in the back on the way to the hospital. Now the fire truck may go from emergency medical call to emergency medical call and never come back to the station. So we're running two ambulances call to call and a fire truck call to call wow. and they work in tandem. And so whichever need is, whichever one requires more people, that's where the fire truck is going. Wow, and in closing Chief, uh, the Kaiser community supported uh, the fire district with its operating levy. We want to really extend a gratitude Thank you. to Thank our you community for that, but it may also need to clarify that that was an operating levy and doesn't necessarily cover acquiring new equipment that's coming to its end of its economic life. And, and uh, what do we need to prepare as a community to learn more about our options about the state of our engines? Well, we told people when we ran the levy campaign that, that this does not include equipment for fire trucks and ambulances that, and that we would look at for a bond. So our fire station it get paid off the bond in 2016 so we're going to come out to the community and ask them for equipment bond to buy fire trucks and ambulances in 2016 uh, for folks because we paid off the first bond we're just simply going to renew the bond and ask people for just like a school district would ask for a bond for school buses and things like that or buildings we're going to ask for a bond for fire trucks and ambulances because we need them this ambulance is 15 years old and it's got so many miles it's got so much wear and tear 
it comes a point you need new ambulances. As a matter of fact, this year we're going to have to do an emergency lease of another ambulance because this ambulance is so tired we're going to have to retire it and put a new ambulance up front on the front line. Well that sounds like that's just a temporary fix to we can deal with the situation long term as a community. So thank you Chief for letting us uh, learn more about uh, what you do here at Kaiser Fire and, and uh, please extend to your staff how grateful we are for what they do to keep us safe. We're grateful for the community support. Thank you, David, and thank you to Kaiser Strong for taking an interest in helping us get this message out to the community. You bet, and you can learn more information about Kaiser Fire at kaiserfire.com. Thank you.